Welcome to episode 169, nice, of Star Wars and Scotch. It's Tim, it's Kevin, and we are here. Is that what you were working on? Yes, and I confused myself and said too many <laughs> words in the same uh, breath. Uh, Perfect. So I botched the original intro, that's what he's, he's referencing. Yeah, great. Uh, welcome to... Ep nope, nope, can do that again. Nice, yeah, that's Let's it. Sip the coffee. Uh, but uh, this is the episode where uh, we bid farewell to Clone Force 99. Probably no, we didn't. Probably not Omega, but definitely Clone. Well, they're Tim. They're retired. No, they're totally retired. Dad Rambo Hunter is is he even had a pot belly? Come on. We'll, we'll get to it. We'll get to it because uh, I'm gonna hit you with something that you're not gonna expect. Okay. Okay. All right. Well. Um, yep, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about the hilarious announcement from Star Wars yesterday. <laughs> Yay. Uh, we can also talk about St. Jude. We were at Memphis, Tennessee we were. Uh, last week. That's why we didn't get an episode out. So sorry to those that were so excited to hear our take on last week's episode. But we were in Memphis, Tennessee at the St. Jude Play Life Summit. We were joined by 350 other content creators, more than 350 content creators. Yeah. Uh, and then also the Rare Drop GCX team was there, put on a charity marathon. Kevin was producing and was fantastic at it. There's a great action shot of Kevin at one point trying to run through the halls <sighs> of the Alsac offices trying to fix a Discord issue, which is fantastic. It's just a great, it's a great caption. I think whoever took that picture of you was just, just feeling it. Sucks it sucks because I feel like I was running faster than the picture is portraying me running. It looks like you're speed walking. And it, well, I kind of was because I know opening that door there, you know that door. Oh, you'll definitely kill someone. Right. And it. I knew that Mandy and Andy and uh, Cheese were like taking pictures. So I didn't want to like kill someone with the door. So I was. Imagine. Half. But I was running. I, it's not posed at all. And I'm making. You did it. You did a great the job. The dumbest face. And we fixed the Discord issue with 30 seconds before we went live. So. Um, and even then it broke again. But that's a whole other conversation. It's fine. It was a great. It was a great production. We we raised a lot of money for St. Jude. We got to uh, we get a lot of new people got to tour the campus. We we got to do work on the campus. It was it's so cool, man. It's it's neat getting to uh, continue our relationship with St. Jude. Yeah, and if you're a broadcaster out there, um, starting today, May first, if you're interested in getting involved, uh, it's Challenge Month for St. Jude Play Live. So um, yeah, you can get involved in a number of different ways. You can start a campaign on Tiltify. You don't have to be a game streamer on Twitch. Doesn't you could be on TikTok. You could be uh, YouTube, podcaster. podcaster, wherever you may be, um, you can support St. Jude Play Live uh, starting today. And there's lots of prizes and incentives you can get uh, by fundraising for St. Jude. So head over to Tiltify, uh, look for St. Jude and uh, start your campaign today. Like uh, get involved and maybe we'll see you next uh, year at Creator Summit. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah. And speak, speaking of St. Jude, we also have a GCX. We've got our charity marathon coming very soon. We haven't officially announced the dates yet, so I don't want to spoil July. it. Uh, <laughs> Oh, he said, she said July. <laughs> uh, Charity Marathon is going to be happening in July. <laughs> and then uh, we have our uh, we have our physical event in August in Orlando, Florida at the Erosion Shingle Creek Resort. Uh, it's August 16th and the 17th. We'd love to have you there. Head on over to GCXevent.com to get your tickets and book your hotel room. The blocks are selling out. All right. The block is uh, is filling up. Uh, I had people in chat yesterday talking about getting their hotel rooms and getting their, their GCX tickets. So don't miss out. We'd love to have you there August 16th and 17th in Orlando, Florida, the Rose and Shingle Creek Resort, GCXevent.com. The hotel's 60% sold out. 60% um, sold out. Yeah, that. So you should head over and, and grab your tickets. You should also check out King's Coast Coffee. King's Coast Coffee. Shake up the way you wake up. Or we... In Shake up the way Enjoy some of that spring surge before it's gone because summer's right around the corner all of a sudden. Yeah, how crazy is that, dude? It's May. I, like, I know. It's going to be May. And Saturday is a holiday for Tim and I. Uh, I don't know. What? It's May the 4th. Oh. It's May the 4th, Tim. It's a very, very important day. You know what I really want to get, though? Mm. You know, speaking of King's Coast Coffee, um, it's nothing to do with King's Coast Coffee, but you made me think about May the Fourth. That Darth, that Darth Maul lightsaber, the collector's mm, edition that they're rolling yeah. out. I I haven't seen the price tag for it, but I really want. It. I saw. Um, it looks really before we good. do that. King's Coast Coffee dot com. Head over, grab your coffee. I was just gonna keep working King's Coast into this conversation, but yeah, head on over to King's Coast Coffee. It's delicious. Get We're your, both drinking it right now. Get your subscription. Okay. Like I don't know why you're missing out on a, on an awesome service that we we offer you guys. Uh, the subscription service, Kings Club. Check it out. Uh, you can change your subscription at any point. You can do it weekly. You can do it bi-weekly. You can do it monthly. 
Uh, you get to set the uh, the frequency of your coffee. You also get to change the coffee that you want whenever you want. Uh, so you could do Roaster's Choice for a little bit. You could do some Aztec, you some Darkness, some Lupo, some Bow Breaker. I've been telling people, I've been talking about Bow Breaker a lot lately. I really like Bow Breaker. I'm not drinking that today. I'm drinking Roaster's Choice, and it's really good. But Bow Breaker's where it's at. King's Coast Coffee. Dot com. Back to lightsabers. I was on yes. TikTok and I saw someone, I don't know if they made it or they got it, but they were handling it oh. with gloves. It was a replica what? of Taryn Malikos's lightsaber. Was it made out of gold? It looked like it was made out of gold with the way he was handling it. And oh my God, it was beautiful. It didn't have a blade, so it just had a fire up mechanism that made like a light inside of it. But man, mm-hmm. that was a that was a sweet lightsaber. And again, I have no idea where the person got it from if they made it or something, but it was it's pretty damn cool. Huh. I'm look I'm on the I'm on the Galaxy's Edge website trying to see if they've got that lightsaber available yet. I don't I don't know if it was Disney. It might have been a, a third party. You think it was a third party? I could have sworn it was coming from it was coming from Disney. Because even this even this uh Disney store announces new stunning new Darth Maul lightsaber. It's definitely happening in the Disney store. Uh, Just need to figure out where. I don't and, it's probably stupid expensive. Knowing how knowing how much they charge for the Cal Kestis lightsaber when Survivor dropped, this thing's probably gonna cost a grand. Uh Sith Sabres has it, N Sabres has it. Oh well, yeah. All of the all of the knock all of like the other lightsaber websites they'll have. I don't those, see anything from Disney. But I want, no, I'm, t- I'm but I'm talking about the officially sanctioned lightsaber because it probably doesn't pop up until until the fourth. But I saw the articles for it. Okay, it's there, Kevin. All right, and it's like I mean, yeah, I could go to another like lightsaber website, but I mean, like this is from the mouse. All right, it's genuine. I don't know. The mouse's lightsabers are not as good as some of the other ones. They're not there. They're really not good. Uh, I've heard stories pretty much from everyone now that after a year or so, the lightsabers start to do funky things. That's why I only ever got the the build your lightsaber. Like that's the only one that I that's have. The that's I, the only I, one that I'll buy. I have the, well, Hunter has his, Audrey has hers and I have mine and, you know, we'll let Jules build one when she's older. But, um, oh, Jules and Kyler should go together and build one. Uh, he did that with Charlie and they had a great time. Oh, I time. forgot he did it with Charlie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He could help Jules build hers. He would just take over. <laughs> I'm trying here, and Tim. She'll just, and she'll just and she'll just let him. You know, it's just like my son can do no wrong in your daughter's yeah. eyes. She, she, he's one of the only people that she would let do that because she is crazy. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, they're great. So um, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking about getting more, but I definitely want to buy from some of the more. I don't want to say reputable. If you, but if you get more lightsabers, then you have to go take like kendo classes. Why? I have room on my shelf. You can see it on the bottom shelf right there. No, but you need then have to. You need to learn how to use one. When am I gonna have it? I Unless see. I'm getting the one w- that the guy made with the the pack that actually cuts through things. Why am I gonna need to learn how to use a lightsaber, Tim? I don't know. What if someone breaks into your have house? Have you seen the competitive lightsaber, um, uh, like fencing? Yeah, like dueling. Yeah, but there's like yeah, a, that's what it's I'm like saying. a whole organization in league. I know that's and like there's actually efficient officially sanctioned schools that like teach you how to fight like different lightsaber fighting techniques like the actual styles. How come you haven't attended one of these yet? Um, Kevin, when am I going to have the time? Uh, after we sell King's Ghost. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe maybe that'll be something we do for fun when, we, when I'm gonna, you know, we're retired. I'm pin that one at the top of the chat. Lightsaber school. Tim lightsaber school. And then your your uh, communities could be like, Tim, will you vlog it? No, that's Tim time. We no, talked about Tim time. time. That's what I talk about with the gym. <laughs> Anything fitness my related time. is Tim time. My time. time. Uh, but yeah, I, I definitely want to see. Well, if you're out there and you've purchased from some of these other websites, let us know the best places because Tim and I have pretty much lived in the D- Disney ecosystem when it comes to lightsabers. So let us know. Maybe there's... Somewhere we should give a try, maybe for the holidays or something. I'll I'll get one, but uh, yeah, let's see. Cool. Um, <laughs> Tim, do you have a Nintendo Switch? What? No, you don't have a Nintendo Switch. Yes, I do. But it's buried <laughs> Are in you my busy somewhere. on June fourth? <laughs> I'm not playing this game. Well, if you don't want to take your Switch out, you could play it on your iPhone or your my iPad. iPad, yeah, like okay, but that's the one thing is like my iPad I use for specific things. It's it's a work tool. This is also a work tool my phone i don't want to play (laughs) video games on my phone i don't want to play video games the only that's a lie the only video game that i play on my ipad is magic arena i play 
Shit. Hearthstone and I play um like why can't it just be on PC? Why can't this be a PC game? I mean, you can just use blue stacks and play it on PC. Oh, that's true. I should do that. That's how I played Lineage 2 for the longest time. That's a good idea. Yeah, I guess if I really want to play it, I could do that. Yeah, but uh, Star Wars Hunters is coming out June 4th. On God, S what? I just don't... I'm going to play it on Switch just because my Switch is charging right now. Who cares now at this point? This game is just... It was. It, they should have released it when they announced it. The problem it. is, is we've been waiting three years, and it's not going to be. That's the it's problem. Not be anything I don't care anymore. It's Overwatch. No one like <laughs> that's not fun anymore. You've lost you me. You say that, but you were very excited at the Avengers Overwatch game. That looks really fun <laughs> though. I saw someone <laughs> panning the map on of uh, it's like Japan 2099, and it said this looks more yeah. Overwatch than Overwatch looks right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, Hunter. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it'll be fun. It might be fun. I, I'm know. sure it'll be fun, but it's not going to be this like groundbreaking experience of, of on the level. What of are you talking about, dude? I'm going to become the number one streamer in Star Wars Hunters, Bounty Hunter Hunters, <laughs> Star Wars Hunters. <laughs> yeah um i i don't think you i think you will be maybe if you try it for three hours on one day that it comes out and then you put it down forever but um it's gonna blow up on tiktok watch this shit oh could you the weird fallout 76 and me on tiktok i cannot understand all of a sudden i get a ton of people i don't get it yeah because it, well because it's fallout it's, and like that's that's a top that's a top search trending. right now like all the fallout there's so much fallout trending right yeah, now. fallout 76 was slayed for me on tiktok anyway back to hunters um they released the, uh, it's a re uh, release day trailer, and the most common complaint mm -hmm. I saw was no gameplay in the trailer. It's a, oh, is it all, is it all rendered? It's all rendered cinematics. Oh, no. So people. Are, that was, that was fine when they announced it. I mean, they've shown gameplay in the past, but I mean, that was years ago. And then you can also watch videos because uh, Asia Pacific has had it for over a year, if I remember correctly. They've had it for a while. Uh -huh. Yeah, so. Um, Again, wow. it's not, this is not this groundbreaking Star Wars game. If you want to have a, a game arena shooter where you can have fun with your friends, here you go. It's free to play, I believe. I'm pretty sure it's free to play. I'm making sure before I open my big mouth. Imagine if it's not. I'm pretty sure it's free to play. Um, it does have Hutball, which was in um, uh, Swotor. Hotball was was fun. I used to play hotball back in the day. For it was technically PvP in that game, which was interesting. Mm. Um, I don't know. It's it's a Zynga mm. game. Like do with that what you will. <laughs> There's not much to it. It's yep. a mobile game. It's available on Switch. There's no price or anything that I can find. Everything just says download. So I'm assuming it is going to be free to play. But Star Wars Hunters June fourth. I don't. Just not ex like at this point, I know we've been talking about it constantly. It's just like at this point, I don't know. I'll, I'll still I'll play it. I'll, I'll play it. Am I going to create content around it? Absolutely not. You'll get like, could it be fun to play on the iPad? It could it'll be. be like a day of content for you. I'm not making content around it. Kevin. Oh, you're not even going to stream it at all. Why would I stream it? It's going to look like ass. Not a, I'm not hooking up my Switch. I have to go find my Switch. Just, I don't just, even remember just, my. I don't even remember my Nintendo account. Just use BlueStacks. It, it still could look like ass. <clears throat> it's mobile graphics. You There's could, no way it doesn't you could look make good. one. You think it's gonna look great? You could make one of those overlays that people make when they play mobile games. Oh, <laughs> I no. knew he was gonna cringe at that. <laughs> That's so ugly. With yeah, like dude. all the characters like stylized into the L's. <laughs> <laughs> I had to do that. I had to do that once for um, a VR stream that we were doing, and it only it only did it in vertical. Mm -hmm. It would only show in vertical, so I had to like make this like this mobile vertical overlay for full screen. It was just so. I ugly. had to do that for a, well. Uh, they, I shouldn't say I did it. They gave me one for a mobile game when I did a sponsored stream once. So ugly. it was hideous, but I did what they wanted, and they sent me a check. So. Thanks for the money. Thanks for the money. But yeah, June 4th. Star Wars isn't paying me, so. June 4th. They don't pay us for anything. All we want. Nothing. If you gave us a free trip to Japan. That's all I want. We would stream the game for a day. Just let me bring my wife. You know, that's it. That's all I want. I don't even. I just want my wife. Uh, he, Tim wants to bring his wife. I don't Japan. even need to bring my wife. Oh, I'll bring my No, sorry, Kevin. I would love to bring all my right, wife, right. but I'm lowering. This is a bucket. This is a bucket. I'm this lowering thing. the stakes. <laughs> you don't want your experience in Japan to be with me. <laughs> I mean, I would like to have some experiences in Japan with you. 
but you're first. Don't you want to spend like a week in Japan with just me? <laughs> <laughs> and sake? That would be fun, <laughs> we'll vlog it. If you if somebody wants uh, to pay for it, we we'll will vlog, the shit we will out vlog of it. it. Pay for us and our spouses, and Tim and I will vlog the hell out of our journey. I will, God, I will talk about your products the but entire man, time. But man, $3,000 per person, just air. It's so fare. expensive to go to Japan. Oh, it's killing me. There's got to be a cheaper way. The cheapest I've seen, I have the flight alerts on, is $2,600 is, is the lowest I've seen. And that was a 13-hour layover in, I forget where. But I, Better be fun as hell. No, it wasn't. God um so yeah it's it's very difficult so if anyone's out there and you got those spots or if you if you are a professional like explorer and you have found cheaper ways to adventure into the, the islands of japan you really want to say that to them they're gonna be like if you take a boat i can i don't I care can, i want to know I smuggle you on the port of los angeles we'll spend seven days yeah. at sea <laughs> we would arrive in tokyo i just want to under the guise of I want to know if anyone's just like strapped themselves to the wheel of an airplane and hung out in the wheel well. People the have done. Time. I don't people know. People have done that, but they're not around to yeah, talk they, about it anymore. Yeah, they don't live very long. But I want to know if anyone's done anything crazy to get themselves to a, like a distant country that you've been pining over. Yeah, I, I will. I will say that our our desire to go to Star Wars Celebration is not solely motivated by Star Wars Celebration. I would like to experience Japan, so I was trying to be like, all right, I'll bring my whole family, at least my oldest daughter. But I can't. I can't afford nine thousand dollars in just airfare, and then worry about lodging, and then worry about food. Like I know you all think we're millionaires, but we're not. We do okay, but we ain't millionaires. So we all got mortgages and shit. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> when you say millionaire, you're talking about like a million dollars in your bank account. Yes. Okay. I. Uh, T don't have this conversation now, Tim, because it, it won't look good on either of us. <laughs> if we're talking about assets, I mean, okay, I will say this. King's Coast alone is worth... Don't don't sell yourself short, Kevin. You're a very successful individual. I'm saying that. King's Coast alone puts us into the millionaire bracket, but I'm not going to sell my shares in King's Coast to go to Japan. <laughs> you coward. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not doing it. Wow, look at this guy. He says he's a Star Wars fan. He won't so from, give up from, his plus, ownership. Plus, then you get into the topic of then people are like, well, what's a millionaire? And everyone thinks you have cash on hand. No, <laughs> assets are a thing. They do exist. Tim and I own stock, property, businesses. So, yes. <laughs> but I'm go, not guys. selling anything to go to Japan. And with that, we'll take a quick commercial break. and We'll talk about the last episode of Bad Batch right after this. And we are back. One thing before Bad Batch. Hey, Lego heads, the May the 4th uh, sale is already started. Oh, that's very Thanksgiving of yep. them. Started yesterday. So if you're... Uh, that's April the 30th. It's not even close to May the 4th. <laughs> so if you're... What is this, Christmas in July? What the stop hell? It. Stop it. We're talking about Legos and they're on sale. Stop, Tim. God, they're going to ruin the spirit of May nope, the 4th. Nope. God, poor poor Obi-Wan. Make Kenobi. it a freaking week. I don't care. Stop. Oh, Yoda is just turning in his grave right now. I am now. the guy oh who starts God. Christmas the day after Thanksgiving. And don't, if you're a Halloween person, do not, do not come after me, oh, Mr. Edgelords. I've seen, now I've seen uh, Summerween is a new thing where apparently you do Halloween in summer. I've seen Halloween right. Horror Nights starts in August now. Don't, don't Halloween people. You get like four freaking months Christmas for six weeks. Deal with it fight me anyway legos on sale for may the 4th uh i'm gonna buy something on friday yeah i have to i'm i'm dying to build legos i'm yeah <laughs> i was uh what was i looking at there was a there was a lego set that was in target the other day and i was like you know what? i could just build that right here i've got the top down camera for magic i could just turn that on and make content around legos the ghost and the phantoms like, on sale for 100 it. bucks down from 130 i really want to build the atat -AT. That is on sale for... Or the big Millennium Falcon, the one that Anne has in her background. The at is on sale for eight fifty, dollars down from 900 That's not a huge savings. I don't think the Fal Falcon's on sale. Darth Maul's ship is $70 on sale. All right. The Sith Infiltrator. You can build a cool. book. 
What is this? Hold on. The force of creativity? Kevin. It's a... What? 150 bucks? Kevin. What, what, what? They don't want to hear about this. Sorry. It, they're on sale. Legos. Go. Bad Batch. Bad Batch. It's over. Did you enjoy the filler episodes? Um, I mean, I, I, I like I like the toss up to the Zillow Beast. Like that was neat. Um, I mean, that was about it. Like I saw that coming. A couple things though. I really thought she was going to communicate with the Zillow Beast because of what Asajj taught her. Nah, but that didn't happen. Also, was the Zillow the Zillow Beast a clone or was it um, the original it was, one? I think it was I think a clone. it was a clone too. I think it was a clone, but I like that it's now living in the forest of Tantus. <clears throat> What's interesting about that is this episode kind of nerfs, doesn't nerf, it really separates Tantus from the Legends version of Tantus because, you know, we mentioned Luke's hand and all sorts of craziness. Now, we don't know all of the experiments that were happening on Tantus, obviously, because we didn't know there was a freaking Zillow beast there until... There's also, like, multiple facilities, too. We only ever got to see, like, one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the funny... I laughed... When Tarkin was like, I hear there's a disturbance on Tantus. Uh, yeah, like now yeah, he just like he knew everything. He's like, immediately. <laughs> and your, your base has been infiltrated. There's a Zillow like, beast roaming around the planet. I was like, you opportunist. Who ratted on his ass so fast? He's got spies in there. Come on. He's freaking Tarkin. It was just really funny so fast. that he knew immediately. And he was like, mm, I'm telling daddy. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the Emperor is not pleased. You know, he went straight to Palpatine. He's like, look, look, Emperor Palpatine. Look what he did. Look what Hemlock did. Mm -mm -mm -mm. And then he was done. He was like, reroute all funding to Project Stardust. And I was like, oh, so inadvertently, the Bad Batch has helped uh, the funding for the Death Star accelerate. I think that was going to happen anyways. But yes. I mean, it can't, it can't be controlled. He was ready to can that project. Oh, I mean, Tarkin hated it from the beginning because Hemlock was getting mm -hmm. unlimited amounts of cash. Tarkin hates everything. He does. He does. Unless it's a planet blowing up. You may fire one. You may one fire ready. one ready. Um, but yeah, I just found that very amusing that he was immediately like, ooh, I'm telling. Um, yep. I. Are you disappointed in the Shadow Trooper ending? Because it kind of like puts the Death Trooper theory to bed. Oh, yeah. We're going. Okay. We're going to the next one. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to be honest just, with you. There's a lot of just, oh, there's a lot of Star Wars happening in this where it's just like, we're not going to close this loop for you. You have to wait. Like, it's just, I don't know. I'll be honest with you. For a finale to the series, I was kind of disappointed. I'll say that the loose ends that were not tied up were upsetting. The end end, I thoroughly enjoyed. Okay. They didn't even, they, so though the, if you had the subtitles on, when the, when the one, sh like we were like calling it a shadow trooper, we thought it was like maybe like V0.1 for the, the, the death troopers. They just call it a clone commando. But the clone commandos were the, the guys the, with the blue. I'm the guy that when one of them was talking, the one that cut uh, Crosshair's hand mm -hmm. off in the subtitles, it says clone commando. Interesting. So there's a lot of, I'm just like, wait, so we went through all of this. We had an entire episode where this guy's hacking and stuff. That could have totally been tech. That would have been awesome because it would have been crazy if he would have been like, he would have turned and there was like a sacrifice moment where like you knew he wasn't able to come back. But he just had like a little bit of him still in him, you know. And they kept like, it was it was zooming in on the one with the goggles too. Did you notice that? Yeah, I don't know. I just that, so that that part I was kind of frustrated. Those guys feel like they got pitched up to be a lot more than what they really were, um, which kind of sucked. I I will be honest. I was really hope like now knowing that the 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 clones the bla the bad batch they kind of just live happily ever after. Um, that kind of honestly is a little little, little disappointing for me. I, I really felt like it needed to kind of just like someone needed to make a sacrifice moment. There was there just wasn't enough like impact in this final episode where I was like, yes, that was excellent. It just kind of just ended on Pabu. And it was just like, all right, I guess that's it. I don't know. I just I didn't. Get, it wasn't as gratifying for me. I don't know what it was. It's just I felt like there was a lot of just oomph missing. Like Hemlock dying, like that was great. Like I was really happy about that. Crosshair making a shot, I think, I was was really cool. Did you notice his trauma just really increasing the closer he got to? Yeah, yeah, of course. It's they, that's every time that he's ever mentioned Tantus or he's run into a situation that involved anything to do with that, his hand starts shaking. And I thought that was funny is that they cut it off at the end. They cut his shaking hand off, so like now he, I guess his trauma is gone now, and he can just live happily ever <laughs> I after. I mean, he can't 
shoot, he needed um, Hunter to, to make I the shot. I thought that was great. He had, to rely, he had to rely on his brother to make that shot. That was really cute. I love that whole thing. It was like Omega knows what she's doing. She's fire when she's ready. Like that was that was it, cool. That was a neat part. They did they did showcase the fact that they had trained Omega thoroughly throughout this entire episode, and she was pretty much ready for anything that was going to happen in the scenario. Everything from you know sneaking through the vault, scouting, to um, getting the kids out safely, to that shot, that moment, knowing exactly what to do, and that she could rely on them without even communicating that he would take the shot and he would nail the sh like it was very cool well that was the big that was the big thing from season one to season two <coughs> is when she was like i want to be trained i want to become a soldier and then she's shooting her bow and stuff she's doing like a bunch of action i things. did think wrecker was gonna so, die i thought wrecker was gonna die it's, it really felt like that was how it was getting like let up he took the he he, he wrestled the bear thing it scratched his chest he was hurt and then, like, he comes off the bed, and he's still all woozy, but he's like, ah! And it, it just, like, it felt like we were kind of leading up to Wrecker making, like, that final moment. Um, I'm glad everybody lives happily ever after, but at the same time, kind of just like, uh, Because now what happens after that? Do they just live out their days on Pabu? I mean, at some point, they just got to take it easy, Tim, you know? like. And then Omega, so we know Omega's involved in the Rebellion at some point. What the hell? I was hoping they were going to say something along the lines, like he was going to be like, where are you headed? And she was like, the forest moon of Endor or something like that. Something? I, but just like now, it's just like, now it's an open-ended thing of like, what happens to Omega? I mean that. So now we're going to have to figure out what happens to her in like in a future, in future pieces of content, which is cool, which is neat because just like Ventress, she can drop into something and be like, oh shit, that's Omega. Um, and it also. But now I'm just like, fuck. The, the Bad Batch could also drop into something if they needed to, you know, like we need one more time i will say when echo saved all the troopers in the jail cell and you know he asked them to stand and we all knew it was going to happen because clones are just loyal to the to the bitter end which as hemlock stated a good soldier follows but orders. Hem hemlock said that was their weakness when obviously it turned out to be that that was their strength was how loyal they are to each yep. other which was awesome um but um uh, that moment i for some reason in my head when he's, you know, I got one fight left in me. I uh -huh. totally thought of uh, Lord of the Rings when the Ents, when he's like, this is the last March of the yeah. Ents. I had the same exact <laughs> vibe from that, yeah. you know. And th the last March of the Ents is one of my favorite scenes in the movie because it's, you know, they're just going to go get revenge for everything that Sauron did to them, whether or not they mm -hmm. get burned up and, and die. Troopers, same mentality. Well, if... You know, you freed us, and there's three of our brothers still captured, so we're going to die trying to get them out, which was just, yep. again. And then a lot of them get to live happily ever after. A lot did. A lot did. Some died. We saw a few of them die along the way. But it really showcased. It was, in my opinion, regardless of how you felt about some of the plots being left open and things like that, and it might be things that could tie it up, that was the pivotal moment for me. That was Dave, uh, which I'm assuming came from George, being like, no, the clones will fight for each other until the very end. They're not evil. They're not bad. Because when we were kids, we thought the clones became the stormtroopers. And obviously, they mixed that up now and changed the narrative. Uh, some of them kind of well, did. Some, no, some of them are the the commandos. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Some of them kind of did, but for the shadow most part, troopers the, get a, a free lot of, pass. A lot of their a lot of their programming starts to fail. Yeah, off. shadow troopers get a free. Well, no, the uh, the ones that were commandos, in my opinion, chose to stay. That was sure. their that, conscious. Like, that choice. could also be. Um, but I just want to say, but a lot of these guys, like they, they went back to being normal. We didn't, we didn't realize at the time that the organic programming that was done to them had a degradation time. Yep. Like at some point it would fail. And so like, that was really cool. And that was nice to not, to no longer really see the clones as villains. We kind of saw them as the, uh, the unfortunate, uh, uh, casualties within like the, this this massive war that we find ourselves in and they they really were like they they suffered they suffered a lot and like that's the one thing that they've done a really good job and we've talked about this before is through the entirety of bad batch and through um obi-wan we really got to feel more connected to the clones as a whole and they weren't just no longer cannon fodder like they were in like clone wars in clone wars a lot of the clones they just they just die a lot you know just like you've got like your staples you've got your cody and your your rex but then for the most part, everyone kind of just just dies. And then now, like with Bad Batch, these are more clones that we get to kind of like connect with. And we've met more along the way. 
And then even in Obi-Wan, they really show like the the viciousness of, you know, after war, like what happens to the clones after the fact. Yep. And they've continued to and, and knowing like uh, like um, Chuchi's out there fighting for for uh, clone rights and things like that. Like it's, it's cool. It's neat that they're giving more. They're, they're humanizing them more. They're really giving them more of a, a presence within the, the universe. Yeah. And Emery obviously turning and now is going to totally saw that one. I coming. mean, they they kind of forecasted that episodes ago. Um, the, the the droid stabbing the uh, doctor. I forget her name. Uh, with the needle was really funny. It just kind of looped around mm. the room. <laughs> and <then> bang. <laughs> um, um, it, we had, I had Kyler sit on the couch with me. He, he came down. He's like, oh, watching Bad Batch. And um, the part that he was like really caught up on was um, Nala Say's scene. I was just about to bring that up. Now, to my knowledge, yeah. Nala Say is the last Kaminoan. Uh, yes. I would assume there's more. Because like they didn't they didn't annihilate the entire planet. So we saw some more in earlier seasons. Which she's the only one we've seen, and I know that the Empire was holding some on Coruscant, but I don't know what happened to any of them. But the way she said, you know, it'll the knowledge will die with the Kaminoans, or it belongs to the Kaminoans. Yeah, I would assume there's more. Like they have to they have to be like on other planets as well. There's no way that the Kaminoans only inhabit Kamino. Fair. So I, I would think that there's more Kaminoans out there, but that that scene I thought was really interesting. I thought she was going to be able to get out. Uh, I was not expecting her to make a sacrifice moment. And so, but it was honestly, it was very respectable too, because like she understood that like her work was being manipulated and it was being turned into something that was atrocious. Yep. And she was like, "This has to go." And I thought that was great. I thought that was really cool. And it's kind of sad that she died, but the way that she went out was very heroic. Yeah, she. Um it, it was it was an epic scene and uh, <laughs> Rampart once again screwed himself. God, what an idiot! Numerous times, I thought he was going to try and sweet talk Hemlock. I did not think he was going to talk smack to Hemlock right out of the gate. Uh, and I was mm. like, oh, maybe he's had a change of heart. And then when he followed, and I was like, no, he hasn't. He's trying to get his way back into the Empire, and he knows that if he steals this research, he can bring it to the Emperor. Um, mm -hmm. So, kind of glad he's dead. Uh, even Same. though I like the character a lot, he's a lot of fun. Um, very fun. He wasn't at first; he was very dark at first. But once he, once in these last few episodes, he became. Uh, he was kind of like the, the the humorous relief. Yeah, he, he he. I'm the spy. That was the energy he was. Yeah, exactly. He, very very Hux esque. He was putting off in these last few episodes, but he got what he deserved in the end. So that was good. Um, uh, what else did I want to bring up? So the Shadow Troopers. I want to talk about them for a second. We're not sure if you and I theorized that they were going to become death troopers. I still think there's some sort of science pathway there that maybe somebody will discover. You think it's just dead? The shadow troopers are done and the death troopers are something. I, I think that I think that was it. I think that was a bait and switch. So do you think the death troopers are a different, a complete program somewhere else? It has to be. I, I don't I just I, there wasn't enough information given to us and and for all and for everything that we know now they said that all of his research was unsalvageable right so anything that he was working on is gone now which also doesn't make sense this is yep you're 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 getting where I was about to go go ahead keep so, going so okay so so this whole thing with the shadow council and with in the Mandalorian and knowing M count and all these things, how do they know that? So, if all if all of his research was destroyed, how do they know that? So, in in my mind, I think I think there's a, there's there's a couple of things. I I think there was there was actual data that was salvaged. Yes, exactly. I think there was backups in another in another. There's no way there wasn't redundancies. There's no way that 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 data cluster was the only data cluster. There had to have been redundancies or had to have been backups. So I think what happens is someone lied to Tarkin. Yes. Someone came in, ISB potentially. There was three battleships. And there was three ten. Star Destroyer. Well, there was one Star Destroyer and there was two. Who what? do we know that works for ISB at this point? I know that's what I'm saying. Like there, like there are a multiple people within the ISB that would fit the time period right now that could have also been on facility that could have found the information and told that that officer to tell uh uh tarkin that there was nothing there also so 
I, I think there's more to Who's it. Who's in charge of the ISB right now? Uh, it's not it. Um, Yularen. It's not Yularen. It is Yularen because this is right before Obi Wan. If you go in the chronological timeline on Disney Plus, the next show to watch is is Solo, then Obi Wan. Yeah, but how? Uh, well, okay. But Wolf was still an. Uh, but I guess we don't know when he was an admiral. Like, when did he go from being admiral to to running the ISB? I mean, maybe it could have been, but Let's I don't. Assume, I, I don't know. Run with me here. Assume Yularen is in charge of okay. ISB. So Yular, Yular, So who in, doesn't in, Yularen in this theory, like? A lot of people. Tarkin. They don't get along. They haven't liked each other since the Clone Wars. He says something in Clone Wars about how you know Tarkin's out for himself. Uh, this is back when you learn still, I'm using air quotes for audio listeners, a good guy in Clone Wars. Yeah. They don't like each other. That's fair. So let's. Maybe he wants to hide that information let's from state. him. Let's So Tarkin or uh, Yularen is an ISB. We have Moff Gideon, who's not a Moff yet, obviously, who's current. No, he's just an ISB he's agent. He's an ISB agent at this point. Um, uh, is Krennic ISB? No. No, he's the science division. So he is science division. So let's say, again, this is where I was going with this. Let's say the ISB did have access to this information one way or another, whether it was like a redundancy backup something, but it was hidden because everything else about this project was hidden from Tarkin, right? It wasn't supposed to be. Oh, known. fuck. What if it went to, what if, what if it got backed up in the, uh, the beach, uh, Jakku. uh, Scarab. Scarab. What if it Scarab. went to Scarab? Scarab. Scarab. Yeah, right. Not Scarab. Jakku. Scarab. So. Yeah, let's say it's somewhere hidden in Scarif. Now, Scarif, though, I feel like Tarkin would be like, oh, let me see if something's in there. But what if it's under a different code name, just like Stardust was the Death Star? No one knew Stardust was the Death Star until they found out the code name, and then they had to go to the vault to infiltrate. It's the whole point of Rogue One. So what if there's some mm -hmm. similar scenario here where it's under a code name, it's hidden, only a select few people know, probably ISB, yeah. maybe Krennic knows, because if Hemlock was science, wouldn't Krennic be science too? Yeah, but Krennic was energy. He wouldn't have anything to All do right, with All right, so this. we'll remove Krennic from the, from the equation. But um, even still, if ISB has access to this information, I'm not saying yeah, that you, Gideon has access to it now, but for Gideon to stumble upon this information at some point in his career is not unheard of, as well as then that would mean that the Shadow Trooper stuff is in the same, or whether it's a different code name, whatever it may be, is in that vault somewhere. Who's to say that in the next, because Shadow Troopers are gonna appear very soon. Because the first time yeah, we see I them is- I don't think it had to do with Hamlock. Is Rogue One. I'm not, uh, not Shadow Troopers, Death Troopers. Death Troopers are, appear in Rogue One. That's the first time we see them. And then from there on out, they're like every Imperial, like important person is flanked by Death Troopers all through till post episode six. Yeah. So I have a feeling this information is not lost. I just think that Tarkin doesn't have access to it because he was not privy to it because that's how the Empire, they hide things from each other. Look at freaking Aftermath. God, they didn't tell each other anything because they were scared that the one person was going to get too much information and then use it against them. So I'm confident that the information is still there somewhere, which is how we end up with Gideon and or the Shadow Council. Maybe someone else from the Shadow Council ends up getting access to it. But that's how the, the information is not lost. It can't be because Project Necromancer, no pun intended, gets revived at some point. So, okay. All right. So I just wanted to go look on Wikipedia about this. Uh -huh. Is there actually a, a breadcrumb trail? Not really. I mean, like, it says Death Troopers were named by Emperor Palpatine himself to capitalize on rumors about a legendary Imperial Military Department of Advanced Weapons Research Project to revive necrotic tissue, which ultimately result in the creation of uncontrollable dead troopers sometime between 1 and 3 ABY. Um, an Imperial who wanted to create especially effective stormtroopers and battle droids and thus launched several projects such as <gasps> Gideon, who eventually became a mob, was at the head of the Dark Trooper project. You know who the... This wait, you know who is the one who inquires about it in Mandalorian in the meeting? is Pelion. Pelion okay. is Thrawn's lapdog. If, oh, 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 oh. If Thrawn is the one that figured all of this out. No, but this is before, but this, the clone troopers would have started. I'm not talking about death troopers. I'm talking about the research of Project Necromancer. Hmm. 
Because Pelion is the one who inquires about it in the Shadow Council meeting in Mandalorian. He talks about Project Necromancer, He's right? the one who brings it up. Brendel Hux is the one yeah. that continues the conversation. Pelion is like, he's for all intents and purposes, he's but Thrawn's Ma little, but, little... But Gideon, but Gideon's the one that picked it up. Gideon had access to it, but the rest of them are asking from the perspective of the Emperor. They don't know that Gideon's doing these side experiments trying to clone himself. So while the information mm. was shared amongst the Shadow Council at some point... Maybe towards the end of the Empire. Maybe it was even pre-Endor. Um, Who knows? We don't know the timeline here. But they, they, Gideon got access to it and used it for his own purposes. The Shadow Council, I would assume, is actively trying to complete the project to get the Emperor into a new body because he's out on Exegol being weird. So again, I would say at minimum we both agree the research is not lost. It can't be. No, it's definitely not because why would why would Gideon bring it up in um, in Mando? It doesn't make also, sense. Also, so, to so an someone has it to an extent. They do get the Emperor into new bodies because Snoke, the crappy body he's in, like it, it doesn't work work, but it works. Yeah, no, so someone someone has it. I just I just don't know who. So that actually excites because the Emperor wouldn't want to give that up. Like no. that's the whole thing. It's like there's no there's no there's no way the Emperor just gives up on that after he, after he was obsessed with immortality. He dies. It, it's impossible. Yeah. So there's definitely something there. We just it, per the usual, we've got to figure out how to get there, or even if we will get there. Like is this is this one of those things where it's just like we won't know, or are we gonna get it in a comic book, or are we gonna do, do like you, a in, in the next season of of Mando? Are they gonna do a callback? Do you think know. there is relevancy to this and the heir to the Empire movie? With some sort of, I mean, there's cloning in the in the book in the original book. So I mean, like, if we want like a Sebayoth, like maybe. But there's also the idea that Snoke or something involving the Emperor gets introduced in the Heir to the Empire movie to bridge us to Seven. Oh, I hate that. I mean, they have to get us there. I'm not. Yeah, we're still I, no, 15. I, I agree. Uh, now, again, we're still like 15. I, I don't know the exact timeline there, the Empire movie. So, for all intents and purposes, let's say 10 to 15 years before episode seven. Is that fair to say? Somewhere in that time frame? Because right now in Mando, I think we're five, six years post Endor. It's supposed to be 20 years later after Endor that episode seven takes place. So, I would say Correct. 10 to 15 years is the safe realm that we could say. At some point, the first order has to rise. All the stuff has happened. We need Snoke. We need all that stuff to take place before Kylo becomes Kylo. Mm -hmm. With that being said, would the heir to the Empire be the catalyst to kick off those ten to fifteen years? You know, ending with like Brendel Hux basically being like, "I will establish a new first order." Some crap like that. I don't know, because I'm pretty sure Thrawn's gonna die at the end of that. I hope not. What else is he? He doesn't have back. anything I left to he, do. I hope he goes back. He has the ascendancy, goddammit. <laughs> I love how much of a Thrawn stan you are. <laughs> I am. I really, God, I love that guy. I mean, if he did go back to the ascendancy, it'd be interesting because then it would just be like the looming threat out there forever. Need it. I like, I mean, personally, I haven't read the, the, the three prequel books. You're missing I'm out. I'm getting there. I'm reading the, the living force right now. Um, personally, I liked it when the Chiss were involved with the Empire the way they were in the Old Republic. They were part of the I Empire. Know, I don't know how they were. So. They were still themselves. They still had the houses and all that stuff, but they were just part of the Empire. Because in the Old mm. Republic, space is divided. And they do. They're still from the outer, like beyond the red line. They're still there, but they have planets on the edge of the outer rim that they control as part of the Ascendancy. I don't even know if they're called mm -hmm. the Ascendancy. They might be. I think they are called the Ascendancy in Old Republic. Um, but I don't know. I like them part better as part of the Empire in the Old Republic. I think they're integrating them more. Now, again, people have, have I've seen people on Reddit go off and be like, well, both could be true because that was thousands of years ago. And what if they just kind of made a recluse society, went back beyond the red line, stayed away, and now all of a sudden, you know. Plus, like you've said, people thought Thrawn was Pantoran when they first met him. Yes. So it could be easy, easily explained away that no one had seen a Chiss for a while because they might have just assumed they were Pantorn. Regardless, back to Project Necromancer. 
we both agree the information can't be lost. It's literally impossible. Correct. Are we hoping that this gets presented in media that more people can enjoy, or are we thinking that this is going to be a comic book book conclusion? Uh, it'll probably end up being a comic book conclusion. All right. Well, or it's going to be in a book somewhere. Like I just I don't see this being a mainstream kind of thing. Why make it such a big deal in Bad Batch? I don't know. I have no idea. That's why I think in, in, in knowing, I'm so knowing, confused. I'm pretty sure Filoni did the last episode because the music was different. The title card was different. Everything was different. And Filoni, those are the episodes that Filoni, like his hand is all over. Well, it's his baby. He needs to send it. He needs right. To, and he, to he's going to send off the characters he created because those are all his. Right. Regardless, Filoni doesn't do things like that just for it to end up in a comic book, in my opinion. I mean, this the the fall of Mandalore. I just don't know how he's gonna like how they're gonna bring this forward. We don't know what they have planned for the future. I mean, you gotta remember too. Yes, we know the Skywalker saga exists through four, five, and six. There are so many like people like this is the end of that era and stuff. And we we thought that in the past. There's so many side stories you can tell as Andor proved during the the time of the rebellion that this could continue in other media. Whether it's animated, whether it's live action shows, I think the success of the, Andor really proved that we don't need Jedi and Sith. That we like the story of the right. Empire and the Republic and the Rebellion. There's a good there's a good chunk of time too from when the gang like relaxes on Pabu and when Omega leaves. Like there's probably like five years there, ish. Maybe where a they could more. saddle up again and go on another mission. And so you could you could do some stuff in between there. And Plus do, Echo they do Echo that on left. Purpose. Yes. So he's off doing stuff. He's not sitting back. Something with Rex. So, yeah, and that's also something that I was really surprised by. Rex didn't show up at the end. Uh, like I really thought he was going to. So it's really interesting that like he was he was I I was a okay. Here's my biggest issue with with I think the way like, with how this has gone. Rex I felt like could have been utilized a little bit more. I would have liked to seen him more in it so we have an idea of what he's going to be doing after we see like when we get to Rebels. Like what what happened between Bad Batch. And rebels don't really know, um, and then also the the Ventress thing. The Ventress thing for me, I think, was the biggest letdown of this season. Um, I really don't like how we just kind of just tossed her in there for a second. We used her as a quick little carrot and then pulled her out. I'll give I'll um, give the Ventress thing breathing room because they have publicly come out and. But say, that's the whole thing is like we're okay with giving a breathing room because we know that there will be more to right. it. There has to be right. But at the same time, if I if I didn't know that, if I didn't listen to this podcast, if I didn't pay attention to social media. If I was just someone who watched Bad Batch and I've watched Clone Wars, I've watched Bad Batch and you see Ventress for just one episode and then there's no more mention of her at all, wouldn't you feel a little ripped you'd off? Be, and you'd be confused. Like, what was the point? You'd be confused as hell. Like, what was the whole point of seeing her? I agree. So, like, that, I think that's one of my, like, one of my upsets with the season that just didn't really, it felt like it was a, it was a, um, like a fan, a fan teaser, mm -hmm. if anything, like, just to kind of get you just excited for whatever's coming next. Uh, and then, yeah, d d not seeing as much Rex as I was hoping just to kind of figure out what happens from when we see him to him saving clones to him being kind of like crazy out in the desert Asi with two other clones. Aside from, well, we know he fights in Endor too. That is canon. Well, no, that's legitimately canon. No, I, I know. I mean, yes, I know. Um, but there's still a lot left, I feel like. You know, it's just kind of like, it was just a weird overall sense. How do you, well, like, again, I don't, it's not the way I would have written it. And there are things I would have liked, loops I would have liked closed. But I enjoyed the episode and I did enjoy the end. And I thought it, like, it, it did hit me in the heart. Um, See, I wanted to cry. I didn't cry. I was hoping that I was going to cry and I didn't. And that's the frustrating part is in my head, I got, I, got, I, I had this, this vision of being like, okay, we're gonna have this moment at some point, the ending of Bad Batch, and it's gonna suck, and I'm gonna, it's it's gonna hurt the feelings, and but it's gonna be emotional, and it's gonna be like, man, I'm glad it happened that way, and nothing happened. There was nothing that pulled on my heartstrings. There was nothing that really brought this journey home for me, where I was like, yeah, that was great. I didn't cry, but it was like, it hit me. Damn, it, what's next? When he said you're our kid, it hit me. It hit me good. Like it felt like. Ah, it didn't get me. It got me good because of everything they've been through. And that was the first time she constantly called them brothers. Yeah. They never like talked about her that way. So for him to say that as a gruff old soldier with a pot belly at that point, it felt good. It felt like they had reached a point where they were our family and you know, you always got the feeling, but for one of them to say it out loud, I don't know. It, it hit me different. 
And I didn't get, I didn't cry or anything. Um, I think to bring tears, we would have had to experience loss and then comfort, um, just like we did with tech. Uh, hey. So I, I think it wasn't meant to be that. I think it was meant to kind of tie it up and not they lived happily ever after because obviously she's about to go fight in the rebellion. Um, but that there was pe the that the the three four if you include Echo had peace about the situation at the end regardless of where you know their adventures and journey were going to take them. Um, so I did I did like the end end. I'm going to disagree with you there. I did like the end end. I, it did hit me as a father, um, and I I I enjoyed the send off of of them. Now again, they could be back because like you said, there's plenty of time. For them to saddle up and go do some other stuff. I don't think there's ever going to be a season four. I could see a mini movie or something. Um, oh, that'd be nice. Uh, I do. I won't. I think we should not count out seeing Omega in live action now. Uh, whether she's part of the New Republic. Especially as an adult. Yep. It would be a lot easier to cast. Yeah. So there's plenty of options there to bring them back and do things. Which I think is also why it was left the way it was. Because you know, Dave, yes, I'm going to end the Bad Batch story, but it's not the end of the Bad Batch. They're still around. Yeah. They can still help. They can still assist. We don't know where that happened in the timeline, uh, th that last part. You're guessing five years, which would probably be right around A New Hope. So sh that's what that's my assumption, you know, is like it, the, the rebellions in full swing. Like maybe we're around like episode five, right? Yeah, now. like she's she's off to fight with Biggs and uh, and all them. So. Who knows? Who knows where that'll lead us? Who knows? I like the open ended here because I like the characters and I would like to see more of them. Um, but this was the end of their story collectively together as a group as Clone yep. Force 99. And um, I thought it was a good send off. There are lots of questions we have. We didn't get the answers we thought we'd get. Um, and I really hope that a lot of those answers come in more. Uh, digestible media and not a footnote sure. in a book, especially yeah, pertaining to Project Necromancer, because I feel like that has the most weight when it comes to the story of Star Wars. Um, mm -hmm. And 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 f I'm not going to say fixing for people that like the se sequels, but closing the loop yeah. on how Palpatine returned, because somehow Palpatine returned doesn't do it for me. I want nope. the information. Agreed. Um, so. Yeah, I mean that's it. That's that's the that's the period at the end of the bad batch sentence. Overall, seasons that's 1 right. through 3. I know I'm going to guess the story, not our favorite Star Wars story, but no. some damn good characters in my opinion. Very much so. Yeah, character development is great. Still a lot of freaking questions, man. Like we never got to finish out the the one like uh, the 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 thing from Zero uh, Horizon Zero Dawn <laughs> yes. the thing that you know like we never we never got like where did the 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 death weapon Brontosaurus come from I don't know and that's frustrating for me um, you know we don't get we don't get to figure out Necromancer uh, you know Ventress you know there's a lot there's there's a few just like open ended things where I'm just like damn I wish we had closure here um, so that's probably like my biggest con. Outside of so many pros, like the, honestly, the the development in the characters, um, the relationship building with Omega, learning more about the Kaminoan uh, cloning projects, like all of these things, learning more about like why M count was actually important. It wasn't that they were trying to use uh, the Jedi blood to make more Jedi. They're using it as a, a binder. Uh, you know, like that's that that stuff is cool. Like that's neat. I, I like that. I like that they're bringing a little bit of science into the whole reasons as to like why they needed Grogu. Why is Grogu important? We now know. We now understand. Because of his M count, because of his age, uh, he could actually help bring the Emperor back to life. But now we have to figure out, well, why? How? How do we get to that point? We don't know. Like, how does Necromancer come back from all of this? So, a lot, a lot, a lot of weird things, but a lot of good things in, in Bad Batch. I think if you go right from Clone Wars into Bad Batch, into Rebels, like it's just a beautiful continuation. Yep. It's a good story. It's just a great story all the way through. And I can't wait to do that. I can't wait to go through all of the the the, the episodes that actually are, are worth a damn uh if you go through the, the critical episodes and do all of that with kyler and like do the critical episodes for clone wars go through bad batch do the critical episodes for rebels and uh, maybe maybe we'll do all of them you i don't get, know but i'm excited to go through these stories you again. gotta do all of them because there's stuff that was in the those filler episodes that played into the final story i know they're filler to you, but for instance this, <sighs> so the bad. zillow beast episode 
was filler. That's not a filler. Nope. That's not you a filler originally episode. called it a filler it episode, really? and look how did I really? look how important it became in the end. So that's why I watch all of them because while you may think I don't it's think not I that a filler, you did. Episode. I, you did. You, you that you, was important though. One hundred percent. It wasn't until this. Uh, it was super important. <laughs> So important, Kevin. I will. Did, no, I think the only the only thing that was important in that episode, I think, was the the emperor's interest at the end of it. That was the only oh, yeah. part that was important. I agree. The rest of that episode, that, but okay, also cool. like, that was it sick, was a but, reminder because we hadn't seen a Zillow Beast since Clone Wars, so you needed a refresher right. that this thing existed otherwise. Especially if, but you it didn't still see- look at it at the end of the freaking day, it wasn't important. I helped him get out. It just. It just helped him get out. Like, literally. Okay, also, so there's he, a Zillow beast I, roaming on a planet now. Yeah, I mean, like, no one's going back to Tantus, so, so who gives a shit? I bet your ass someone from the ISB is going back to Tantus. Someone's going to be uh, going Tantus. back. Tantus. Yeah. Um, did you watch... Old Tantus. Did you watch... Uh, uh, I, I did say Tampus. Uh, <laughs> Bluey Surprise? No. <sighs> no, I just watch Bluey with Kyler whenever he wants to watch so, it. Can I tell you? No. <sighs> Don't ruin that for Because... Me. It plays into what I was going to say for the parents Don't out there. The, if you watch Bluey Surprise, the in two about? weeks, we've gotten that happened and now it happened in Star Wars, too. So Disney, I don't know if they did that on purpose, but I can't. You're talking about your kids growing up and, and moving on? Yeah, I just, we'll, we'll, when you watch it, we'll talk about it. But I've seen Grown Up Bluey. You saw Grown Up, grown up Bluey? So you didn't? I saw. He doesn't, he doesn't. I know she has a kid. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. That was the end of Bad Batch too. They did it the same exact way. They did in Bluey Surprise. Yeah, but but Omega doesn't have a kid. That's not what I mean. It's just the growing up process, Tim. I know. That's what I'm saying. I get that. Right. He's Hunter had to let go of 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 Omega, and then i um, Bandit had to accept the fact that Blue was grown yeah, up. It's it's that's all I'm saying. Yeah. It was just Disney did it twice in two weeks. Disney knows how to pull on heartstrings. That's why I have a hard time watching any any Pixar. They did, movie. but I'm wondering if they were like the parents will watch this with the kids, and then the parents will watch this with the kids. <laughs> oh yeah, most definitely. Uh, well, that's gonna do it for episode 169. Nice of Star Wars and Scotch. Uh, that's a wrap on Bad Batch. Next week we're gonna talk about Tales of the Empire, which comes out on Saturday. Uh, May the 4th. Oh, yeah. Uh, so we got Tales of the Empire. We're going to have guests for a few weeks after that, and then we will be jumping right into Acolyte uh, after that. And, uh, yeah, just be prepared because House of the Dragon will probably make its way into the conversations as well because that comes out in June. Tim. What if I don't watch it? You're going to watch House of the Dragon. All right. Are you not? No, I'm going I to. I thought you liked season one. I did. I had a great time. Okay, so why would you not watch season two? Oh, just to give you crap. He's just he's he's doing it on purpose now. See this? Mm-hmm. If you're out there and you're a sponsor and you'd like two old two men who act like an old married couple, they don't use the old. I was saying I'm very spry. Like an old married couple, we okay. act like an All old right. because you're like my wife and I'm like your wife, so we bicker like an old married couple. I don't I don't bicker with my wife though. Exactly. We have good relationships with our eyes. You and me, we just bicker. Mm. <laughs> That's the bit. That's the bit. Uh, it's a good hey, bit. Tim's playing Gray Zone Warfare, and so you should go over to his, all of his channels and check him out playing Gray Zone Warfare this week. Really fun. Uh, Great time. Uh, also, uh, before we do that, we launched a Fortnite map. I forgot to mention that. We did. So if, we did if you go to Fortnite, Fortnite you search GCX and you see Bed Wars, uh, please, every time you play the map. It helps the kids of St. Jude because uh, you, uh, Epic has donated 40% of their revenue to folks making these UEFN maps, and it's all based on player base. So the more you play the map, the more you help the kids of St. Jude because we're going to be donating the proceeds of the map uh, to the kids of St. Jude. So GCX, Fortnite, search it, Bed Wars, have fun. But Tim is going to be playing uh, Gray Zone Warfare this week, so you can check him out on really? Twitch, YouTube, TikTok. Uh, and everywhere else on the internet at Darkness429. I'm Kevin. I'm KMagic101 on Twitch uh, and YouTube uh, and TikTok. Uh, Kevin X Vision on Twitter. Are you, are you also going to be checking out Grey's I'm going to check that, it out with, with Ben today. We're going to run around cool. and, and pew pew and, and see. Nice. I enjoyed my first little foray into it. I think it's a lot more my speed compared to Tarkov. I will say this. Yes. It, it's for me. You know my complaint was always that Tarkov felt very convoluted and I needed a spreadsheet up next to me to understand things while there is a learning curve in this game it seems a bit more forgiving to learn how weapons work and things like that the the 
Yes. So I'm I'm more apt to learn in I an agree. environment where I, you know, don't need to. You're not getting pressured. You're not pressured by time either. You can do whatever you want for as long as yep. you want, which and, is cool. And it's like not studying for a test uh, the night before. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, checking out Grey Zone Warfare this week. Um, and uh, we are Star Wars and Scotch. If you like the episode, it's your Everywhere. first time. There's 168 other episodes for you to listen to. You can go back and hear about all the times we were wrong, especially in Bad Batch. Um, Very uh, wrong. And there are a few times we were right. So uh, check us out. We are all over YouTube. We have a shorts channel. We're on iTunes. And the more you comment, rate, review, and subscribe, the more it helps us. So please do so. Uh, but we will be back next week. We're going to talk about Tales of the Empire. And uh, I have a feeling there's going to be some meat on that bone, too, based on the trailers I've seen. I hope so. So uh, that will, and it'd be good to see Lord Vader again. Uh, yes. So uh, we'll be back next week. But Tim, until we see them again. Yes. May the force be with you. <laughs>